Okay, now the simplest thing to do probably is just to work a couple arm bars and then we'll drill. So you have a couple things to go for. Uh, and these arm bars feed into how you help hold the position as well. And the first one, usually taught, is he'll put his hand on his knee. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach underneath and then I'm gonna pull as your shoulder, okay? Okay, I'm gonna pull his arm all the way to my body. And then I'm gonna put my hand here and my foot is gonna come back kind of where, where the arm is. I'm going to sit that arm. That's your classic step over arm bar. The quick arm bar goes on fast, and it's one of the reasons why we don't push on the knee like that. Okay, but most people will. If they're not jujitsu. They're going to put their hand on the knee and just try and push it off. Reach underneath, hold it up to your body, hand to the mat, step, rotate all the way over, and finish. Okay. Real basic. Everybody should be able to do that one quick. Back and forth, go ahead. He reaches and grabs and pulls it up to him high. Hand to the mat. And now you want to just be able to make one step. Go back again. Yeah. One step and spin. Not two. So he's going to step behind. Good. And now one rotation. That's it. And leave that knee where it's, where it's at. You don't need to bring this foot over. Okay. You might bring this one over if I start doing particular things with my hands. And then he feels like he has to engage this foot. But otherwise, he's good to go right here. Knees pinched together tight, right? Then you just focus on grabbing the thumb pad, and then you're done. And so it should just be one, one step. Post your hand to the mat, one step and go. Okay, keep going. Let's watch this arm lock here. Put his hand on my knee, bring it up. I step and go. So the first thing I'm doing, okay, my arm is on, in his armpit. Sometimes it's in the armpit. Sometimes it winds up in his neck. I'm okay either way. But you'll notice that the first thing I did was this. Okay, so I'm curling my heel to my butt as far as possible. Because if I don't, there's nothing preventing Steve from just rotating and getting his elbow to the mat. Get your elbow to the mat, face me, get now. What makes that tough for him is not my knees, it's my foot. Pulling my heels tight to my butt and then I'm taking the toes of my, the ball of my feet and I'm driving it into the mat. So now he tries to get this elbow to the mat, very difficult, okay? My knees pinched together make it hard for him to push a knee over the head or put a foot down be between his legs. So the, both these things are important. This has to come in as tight as possible. This has to come in as tight as possible. Then I just put my focus on his thumb pad. So even if he tries to do a hitchhiker escape, I can just change the angle right down very easy. But before my butt ever touches the mat, stay there, that's tightening up, okay? Before my hips ever touch the mat, so it goes here, go slow, step. So now that's all super tight. By the time I get here, it's already almost locked in, okay? My foot underneath his back is also flexed. So he's kind of locked in the position and up, okay? Keep going. Near side arm lock. That's the far side arm lock, right? Near side arm lock's even quicker. So we're here. Maybe I feel him pushing on my chest. Anything like that. Anytime I can cup his elbow and get behind his tricep. I can attack this with either arm. Okay? I often would just grab like this. And then I soccer kick his armpit. My foot comes in his armpit. Now all that needs to happen is my leg comes over his face before my butt touches the mat. There's the arm bar. It's very quick, like that. Which is why, from his perspective on bottom, you never want to have this arm extended and touching their chest when they're on knee right. Okay. So we're here. That's the arm bar. Okay. It's a quick one. If you want to do it slow, you can do that as well, where you're kind of focused. Getting behind his tricep. As long as my hip, I like to leave my hand there. Something is back here, so that I can't get out. And then as I lay back, I sneak my right foot into his armpit. Now there's no space, and you're already locked in before you ever even touch the mat. Okay, give it a shot. Your leg needs to come over the head before your butt touches the mat. So if Steve does the near side armbar just showed you, 
But his butt touches the mat before his leg comes with my head. There's nothing that stops me from sitting up into it. Right? Same thing if he does his step over. If his hips touch the mat before his leg is fully over my head, then I'm just going to rise up on it. Okay, so when he's here, as long as that leg goes over my head first, now there's no way I can come up on top. So your hips never want to touch the mat until that cap is all the way over their head. It's super important. Okay, otherwise, you're just pulling them on top of you. Okay, keep going. Your side on bar, far side on bar. Play with it back and forth. Let's have one other piece now. I'm going to put my hand on the near side collar. Okay? And there's two ways to do this. There's the pry bar, and then there's collar choke version. So we'll do collar choke version first, which is more classical. Okay, so you're here. I'm basically going to make two motions. The first motion, I'm going to take out the slack of this collar, which if I don't do that, you can see how big the collar is. Easy, and then I put this hand in, now I'm here. Now I have good connection. So it's exactly like you're doing a cross collar choke. Open and lift, hand in. Pressing my, the back of my hand up against Steve's neck, and I'm in a good spot for a choke. He starts messing with this arm. I can pluck and lift, just like we did before, and I can come behind this for an arm bar. And if he starts turning towards me, my thumb goes here, and then I turn and drop. And that's the choke. Okay, so we'll go a little slow on that. Take out the slack, go here, he turns towards me. My thumb comes in here. And as my elbow drops, I'll dismount for a minute, and I'm going to put my head over here. Usually, you don't always have to, but I dismount. And my head comes down here. So the nice thing about that particular collar choke, I can use this grip to hold, and I'm always just one move away from a choke. And if he does turn towards me, it doesn't take much pressure, as long as you have a good connection, especially from that upright position, to finish with that blood choke. So now you've got this threat combined with this one the whole time, okay? And this makes it that much more difficult for him to turn towards me, especially without getting choked, and even a little bit harder to roll away from me, because as he does, I can control this arm, okay? So one more time, open, connect, thumb, elbow drops, there's the choke. It really does help to take the time to take out the slack and get a good grip. So the whole time I'm on top of Steve knee ride, I feel like I have a good connection. Monitoring this arm, I can always do that step over arm bar, or kicking arm bar here, always. He turns towards me, and there it is, quick. Okay, go ahead and give it a shot. What we would do next is we would do, so instead of having the right hand in that car, we're gonna put our left hand in that car, right? Which is one I used to like to play a lot. So it's quicker than knee ride, then I go here. And this is what we call a pry bar. So if Steve goes to turn towards me, I have good control here. And this lends itself to other types of chokes, like what we call baseball bat chokes and things like that, where I come in and move around the head to attack. So there's a whole other family of offense we can play from there, right? For example, here is like a little baseball bat and drop or sell to finish. And then we just do rounds like we just did, only the right hand has to stay in that side. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for frequent updates because we're updating this every week. And make sure you comment and like and share our videos. We appreciate it and we definitely try and respond to all the comments. And if you like what we're doing and you like the material, check out SPG University, SPGU. Uh, and you're going to see a ton more uh, in, in much greater depth than what you see here on YouTube. Thank you very much.